We'll hear a chilling 911 call from a mother helplessly watching her daughter's car speeding out of control. Oh my God, oh my God, what do I do with her? The call ended with a crash that killed the 17-year-old girl. Tonight, we're taking you under the hood of that car to show you what may have led to the tragedy. Contact 5 investigative reporter Joe Ducey from our Scripps sister station in Phoenix reveals new details putting pressure on a major car maker and how it could affect drivers who own similar cars. I just sit and think. I wish I could just see her again. Ryan Bloom beams as he talks about his daughter, Sage. Today is my birthday party. Well, she loved going to church. Uh, she went to the youth group, and she cared for people. Sage was an Arizona high school junior. Into her school, her family, and her first car, a 2002 Ford Escape like this one, Ryan checked it and okayed it. She was just like, thank you, Daddy, thank you, Daddy, thank you, Daddy, thank you, Daddy, you know. Yeah. So, and that... That hurt. That kind of hurts, you know. Yeah, yeah. January 27th, Sage is driving the car for the first time with her mother Jamie following, but something goes wrong. Sage calls Jamie, and Jamie calls 911. Oh my God! Oh my God! What do I do with her? She's seeing what two surveillance cameras catch: Sage's car speeding by on a busy street. I can see her pushing on the brakes. I can smell it burning. Ryan gets a desperate call. I didn't expect blood-curdling screams on the other side of that phone. Is that what was happening? Yeah, Jamie was freaking out. Oh my God, she's a wreck! She's a wreck! Oh my God! You know when that time stops and you just think, you know, please just, God, let her be okay. Eyewitnesses say Sage was swerving to avoid accidents until she couldn't. Her SUV rolled three times. Sage died hours later. We all just came together and cried. Bald. We discovered Ford issued a safety recall involving the accelerator cable on 2002-2004 escapes, including Sage's car. Then we uncovered something Ford did not send to owners, and what some advocates say should have prompted a second recall. It's a warning sent to dealers 10 months after the recall, showing how mechanics could be making an incorrect repair. By the time dealers got the corrected instructions, Ford's own records show more than 300,000 of the escapes had already been fixed, including the escape Sage was driving. We showed Ryan Bloom and his attorneys what we found. There's the correct way, and there's the incorrect way. Wow. And now you're seeing it. Ford's own instructions show the potential danger. Damage could be caused if mechanics lift up on the speed control cable. This demonstration provided to us by the Bloom's expert for another case shows that could cause the plastic cover to break the speed control cable to come loose. Accelerate fast enough and the cable can stick. Experts say that leaves the throttle open and the car traveling at very high speeds. On this day, inspectors for both Ford and the Bloom family are here. Bloom inspector Bill Williams stakes a small camera through the engine under the crucial cable area, being careful not to disturb any evidence. That's the catch. The speed control cable broken, lodged under the engine cover. The throttle stuck wide open. The Bloom's attorney Bob Bodeman and Williams say what Ford warned its dealers against, damage to the speed control cable, is exactly what they say they found in the escape Sage Bloom was driving the day she died. This is one of the, the clearest uh, demonstrations I've ever seen of a safety defect in a vehicle. Clarence Ditlow says the Bloom's inspection was clear because the vehicle hadn't been moved since impounded and technology allowed an examination of the speed control cable. He's with the Center for Auto Safety in Washington. This is a problem that is not behind us, it's in the future. Ditlow is so concerned about hundreds of thousands of escapes that could be on the road with a bad repair, he's taking action. I don't see how Ford cannot do another recall. Ditlow's organization just filed a 144 page petition with NHTSA based partly on Sage's accident. It pushes NHTSA to open a recall investigation that could result in a second recall of the affected escapes. Ford's attorney didn't want our cameras at the scene and their inspectors didn't comment, but now Ford is responding, saying, we offer our deepest sympathies to the Bloom family for their tragic loss. We are in the midst of our investigation and we've not reached any conclusions. We will work closely with NHTSA to determine the cause of the crash and will take appropriate action if warranted by the outcome of the investigation. So what if you're driving one of those Ford escapes? 
Ford says if you bring it in for service, this notice remains in their system, allowing dealers to check on recommended repairs. But Joan Claybrook, a former head of NHTSA, thinks the automakers should have to give some answers to the federal government for not sending owners a second notice. They didn't warn them properly because they never sent the letter that they sent to NHTSA and to their dealers. They never sent that letter to the consumer. If Ford is found to have violated the NHTSA statute for failure to recall, she believes Ford could be subject to civil fines, and she can't understand why that second notice wasn't issued. I, I'm just uh, outraged that Ford would behave this way. I know that there's more out there that are running around with that bind in there, just waiting for the right circumstance to happen. There are circumstances this expert says came together like a perfect storm that day in January. Oh my God. My poor child. Cutting short a young life in this spot. Now only a cross is left here to keep her memory and the memory of her death alive. Oh my God, she's a wreck. She's a wreck. Oh my God. So far, the Blooms have not filed a lawsuit, and regulators haven't made any determinations involving the accident. NHTSA says it has received the 144-page petition and will respond as appropriate. You can read Ford's full statement on our website. I'm Investigator Joe Ducey, News Channel 5. One thing the Bloom family wants everyone to know, if your car starts accelerating suddenly, the best way to handle the situation is to put your car into neutral and try to steer to the side of the road.